we're just gonna help you down. Get this guy. Alright, doing alright? Alright. You're halfway there, how you feel? I feel a little bit shaky. A little bit shaky, it's alright. Take a couple deep breaths, relax, and uh, everything will be just fine. It always gets better once you're underwater. Can someone hand me my uh, camera, please, over there? Who's putting the cage closer? You're swimming there. No, we don't. There you are. There you go. Yes. I don't think we need to. Uh, no, you don't need to. Are you going to be with me in the uh, two man cage? Yeah, sure will be. And Gordon's going to be in the. Right. Are you ready? Walk. Right. You might want to just take your BC because you'll have trouble. Get all the air out of your BC. Everything out, all right? You want to go straight into the cage, okay, so you so don't want any Before you do anything, I just want to clear my mask. Uh, where's, can you explain to him how to get in the cage? Yep. Yep, okay, here it is. What you're going to do is you're going to step down there on the side, and then just underwater, I want you to put one hand on one side of the open, one hand on the other, and just sort of lower yourself right in there, okay? okay. I'm going to get in first so that I can help you get in, and Gordon will be right here on top to uh, make sure you taken care of from the surface, all right? Okay. Alright, you just step on the cage. Put your hands on the sides. Yeah, when he's putting anywhere. Okay. Sit on the sit on the transom board and go and feed first. That's a good one. You're going to keep the cage up towards the boat, is that right? With you Yeah, there he goes. He's going in the cage now. Okay. You want me to talk about what I'm doing? Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go down, I'm just gonna be down here and film these guys underwater here. So let's get this thing rolling and then lower it down. Got the action underwater here. Get the camera out. Put it on its nose down. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, just, just get it there. I'll come up and wait, show you what this is. Right here. I think a little plug that's not plugged in. 
Put it on its, on its nose up there so it could drain off a little bit. Clip these four clips, roll the camera, and wouldn't roll. I think there's a little plug inside that hasn't been plugged in. Take it gently upwards so no drops go inside. Okay, that's good. Yeah, okay, put that aside, Mike. Now, see on this side, there's that little plug with four pins on it on the end of the cable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's plug it in there, please, and put the little loop over the top. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Make sure the handle goes in through its. Okay. 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 This is the locating. Yep. That's it. Yeah. 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 underneath it, Gordon. Yeah, I will. Uh, shit. Do you want to roll that? What's, ask me the question again. Was that a difficult position to be in? It's a strenuous situation there. Yeah, you've got the water uh, surging up on the back of the deck here, and um, the water's fairly cold here, so you need to really hold the camera steady to get those good shots, but uh, I think we got some good stuff. Okay, okay take it out. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Action. Ready? Yeah. Okay, go for it. What are you doing, Renee? Oh, um, I'm chumming on the moment. It's a mixture of oil and all kinds of gross stuff. Um, to call the sharks and the oil forms a slick the sharks actually smell that and they just follow their noses and when by the time they get here they see the bait and uh, you have a lot of action going on is that the way the sharks come closer yeah that's the way the sharks come closer they smell the bait and they smell the, the slick as well all the food and they think there's something going on there so they just follow their nose how many times have you got to do this um i have to sit here like all day but sometimes we like swap places because you get really tired sitting here doing this the whole time. Is it nice? Is it a nice job? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't make a mistake. No, you have to get dead fish, throw it in there, old oil, and it looks totally messed. I mean, people with strong stomachs ma might hold this, but people with, with no strong stomachs can't hold it. It's not very nice. Not what I call a nice dinner. What about the smell? Oh, the smell is also, I mean, the smell is not that bad, but it's also very strong. The odor, I mean, I'm surprised the sharks like it because we don't like it at all. I mean, we run away after the smell. Um, well, we had to sleep on deck and we smelled this stuff, and it really makes your stomach turn and toss around. Yeah, I mean, it looks kind of quiet today, so I wonder what his nose feels like now. Well, I'm just keep on chumming to keep all the sharks coming, see if they do come through.
Mike, walk over to the to your left. To your right, sorry. Mike, you're the dive master here, and you've got a young guy diving there. Tell us, about, how do you feel? I'm just keeping an eye out to see if, uh, if everything's okay, watching for hand signals. Um, if there's a problem, we'll just bring them in quickly and get them out of the cage. Yeah. What can I I'm the dive master. Okay. There you go. Okay. I'm Mike Hughes and I'm a dive master. And um, my job on this expedition is to oversee all dive operations, um, make sure that everybody's kitted out with gear, and um, when they're in the water like they are now, I stand on deck and make sure that everything runs okay. And if there's any problems, um, I monitor the hand signals to get the guys back on the boat as soon as possible. What sort of problems can they run into? Um, well, Mark being, being young down there, the only thing... Look, they're pretty safe in the cage. It's just a panic syndrome that might, that might, uh, that might happen. Um, but he's with Wiz, and so I'm sure Wiz will, will, will calm him. But if it, if it gets to a situation where he wants to get out of the cage, um, it's good to have somebody on the top here just to pull him out quickly, you know. What do you think of a young guy like that diving uh, in a cage? Great. I wish I was diving in a cage at the age of 15, really. It's an opportunity I think that um, very few young guys get to do. And I think it's fantastic for a guy to start off his diving career with, with, with a dive like this. Really, I do. It's fantastic, man. It's really great. Thank you. Do you, what's happening with the sharks today? Well, at the moment we're chumming, we're trying to attract them into the boat. Uh, we've had a bit of a lull, we've had a lot of sharks around the boat over the last couple of days. Just turn around there, what's, what's happening there? I just got a signal that they uh, want to come in. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I'm what? fine. Mark, what was it like? It was great. It was a great new experience. There weren't those shocks, but I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was different. Are you scared? I, I wasn't scared at, at any time. It was, it was great. It was, were you, it were was you, a good feeling. Were you looking out for... Uh, I was looking out for shocks, but there weren't any at that moment. I was looking, well there is quite big fish there, and they went out of the cage, I stayed inside, it was great. Alright, you did really well, how'd you like it? I liked it very much, but I was just a bit worried about my air because it went about down to my time. Yeah, well, we were real shallow. You still have, you're still within a conservative amount of air, but you look great down there. It looked like you were enjoying yourself. Did you yeah. see the little shark I was swimming yeah. with? Yeah. He yeah, was, yeah, I did see it. He was cruising yeah, right there I, with me along the camera. Yeah. 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 He was a cute little shark. I thought I was... So we did see a shark after all. Yeah. Not a man eating shark. <laughs> A what? shark nonetheless. I saw you uh, left the cage one stage. What were you doing? Yeah, well, you know, it didn't look like we were going to see any uh, big great whites. And so I slipped out of the cage and wanted to show Mark, you know, what we see out there. And I shot some video that we can later on look at. And we can ex examine some of the sea life, the sea anemones and the sea urchins and the different types of beautiful fish that are on the bottom and some of the kelp. So it was uh, real enjoyable getting out of the cage, swimming around, showing Mark that you know you don't have to be scared of the ocean. It's some place that you can get out and enjoy and uh, explore. Mark, Mark, ask him. Uh, you you saw nothing today, but what did they see? What did you see while I was in there? What well, what, what what did you see? No, when they, uh, they, they the first three, the three days. What was it like? What, what did you see the first few days? Well, the first few days we had great whites all over the place, literally. Okay. What was it like the first few days? 
Well, the first few days we had great whites all over the place. It was really exciting. And we were going down inside the cage and they were actually coming up and bumping into the cage and thrashing around grabbing the baits. Evidently the metal also gives off a little bit of electromagnetic signal that sharks are very sensitive to. They'd actually come up and bite the cage on occasion. So it was tremendously dramatic to, to be experiencing that. At one point, uh, we even got outside of the cage with the great white, one of the first times anyone's ever done that. There have been a few divers before uh, us, but this was one of the first times that I've ever experienced anything like that. How did you actually react when you, or how did they react when you came out of the cage? Well, it's really interesting. Uh, what happened is the great white really didn't even notice we were out of the cage at first. I saw him up there biting on the baits, and then he realized that we were there and I was sitting on the bottom filming. You got a shark, you got a shark. You're on the boat yet? Yep. Small white. Give me my mask. I can help. Great. Right, so we have a shark out, outside the cage. The first one we, we saw outside of the cage, he came right at me at one point, straight on, and I actually had to posture myself to let him know that uh, I was in charge and I wouldn't be bothered by him, and he actually took off. Now it looks like we have one, and uh, I'm certainly gonna get back in the water and, and dive with him. Yeah, me too, I wanted to. You wanna yeah, see him? I wanna see him. Okay, maybe we'll get you some uh, uh, more air in that tank, and uh, we'll hop back in if he hangs around the cage for a few minutes. <laughs> Awesome. I believe you lost the camera. How did it actually happen? Mike. Oh boy, that's not a very good subject with me. <laughs> ah, you would have to bring up that subject. Well, it's not a, not a great subject with me, but um, what I had done is built uh, a thing called a bike cam. My concept was to be the first person who would ever film what it would look like to be eaten by a great white shark. So we built a stainless steel housing around an underwater camera and we baited that housing so the shark could actually come up and bite the camera itself. That's why we gave it the name Bite Cam. And this big powerful shark came up out of the gloom and actually bit the camera housing. And he bit it with such force that he ripped the whole rope suspension system that we had built and he swam off with the camera and we lost it. We did get the footage though, we sent this a signal to the surface to another camera so that we actually do have the footage of what it's like to be eaten by a great white. Did that all happen here or did you go out for... No, we, we did it right right here off the back of the boat. Take it in, he's talking to you. Okay. Let me... your brother, stand by. <laughs> Single pass, go away, sliding, huh? I can see, I was very buoyancy when I, I just push away with my foot and it just pushes up and I come up. It's just much better than the fins. It's like walking on the fin. moon. Yeah. I hold on and the cage always sh is shaking like this, yeah. So it's and then it's, is that the same feeling as is on the, if you are a shark is bumping it or is it different? Oh no, it's a, the shark hits the cage, it just goes. It's just a, you know, so it's, it's a like much violenter shake. It's like you're riding on your bicycle and crashing into a brick wall. <laughs> oh, okay. Rene, why don't you come in? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. So you just yeah, get your wetsuit on. What did it look like? Like, could you get some shots there? So you asked that question again. <laughs> what did it look like down there? Did you, did you get some shots of the good guys? Yeah, it was beautiful. We um, got some lovely tracking shots around the cage, trying to give them, or give a shark's point of view of what it's like to see people inside the cage. You do. We've, we've had the bite cam story. Now we've had the the viewing story from the shark. But you actually did a, did a, did a free dive a few minutes uh, before we saw, actually saw the shark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I kept looking behind me, kept watching my back, 
when I had the chance. Uh, but I felt pretty safe down there. And, you know, there hasn't been too much shark activity up until now, so it was pretty safe to be there. And then I took the opportunity to get a few shots underneath the boat, right from the bottom, with a cage in the corner and the boat, giving a different perspective on the boat. Look, I hope I ain't found a camera. Oh, now we can talk. Theo, what is your name, your full name, and what do you do on board? Uh, my full name's Theo Ferreira. I'm actually head heading up the field operations out on the uh, shark shoot we're doing. And at the moment, uh, we are actually sitting trying to attract sharks to the boat. We've been chumming all morning uh, with very little success, but we got excited a couple of minutes ago. We had approximately 2,8 meter white shark make a uh, close swim past the furthest bait we've got out there. Uh, we're hoping that it'll come back very soon because uh, it will be a great highlight to the day having the, uh, your youngster out there actually diving face to face with a white shark. Tell me, what are you, in terms of white shark research and young people being involved with that, you know, young guy diving, how do you feel about it? Look, uh, I'm very, very uh, proud to be involved with our youth. Uh, white shark research has got a uh, reputation for actually having an intense involvement with the youth of Southern Africa. We involve over half a million school students countrywide in our projects. We've got education uh, lecture shows, we've actually got slide presentations we do at schools countrywide. And we're the only scientific research project in the world that actually takes out young selected pupils from various schools on white shark uh, expeditions like these, where they actually come face to face with the white shark and learn more about this important creature in the ocean's ecosystem. The reason we do this is we believe that by educating and giving the children a fundamental, clear understanding of the role of this apex predator, they go back as fine ambassadors for white shark research to their communities and actually re-educate the uh, youth and the parents in those communities. Thank you, that's nice. And speed? Okay. Uh, Donny, you're the father of Mark, who's just been in these shark-infested waters. What do you actually feel about it? Well, I'm a filmmaker, and I've been a filmmaker for the past um, 19 years. And these guys were born while I, uh, while I did my work as a filmmaker. They grew up as, a, as, as, as in, a, in a house where everybody just talked film. They're both divers, both of them, Rene and Mark. And some people would probably say that I'm um, going a little bit far, send my kids down into a shark cage as bait. Um, I think it's a great experience for them and uh, they've been looking forward to this. We've talked, to, talked, to, talked, talked to so much about it at home that they really look forward to this. And I mean, somebody like Wes Skiles here and the, the rest of the, uh, the, the THA film team, um, I mean, they're the best in the world. And I really think uh, Mark was in safe hands there. I think this is an experience he'll remember all his, the rest of his life. Okay. Uh, you've been out here shooting footage, getting material for a major documentary on white sharks. Tell us about the, the film and how it all came together. Um, well, we've been busy on this for about a year now and backwards and forwards and lots of faxes and lots of talking. I've been in America for two years, oh, for, for two months, I'm sorry. Um, uh, the Safritao people came to America. The organization behind something like this uh, is, is very, very big. I mean, it, it takes a long time. It's also very expensive. Finally, and I think this is the first time that the film like this about South African white sharks in South African waters uh, uh, will be done. Uh, we hope it's going to be good. I think we've got some of the best footage ever filmed on great white sharks. Uh, we lost a camera, uh, one of the West cars got bitten by a seal. We've got all that, we've got sharks catching seals. Um, it's great working with an American team. These guys are very professional. It's uh, wonderful to know that the South Africans can do this and come up with the, with the goodies. Um, Ronan Val Taylor did something about great white sharks, but very little about it, mainly about uh, uh, the new electronic barrier. Um, it's, the French have done something here, but this is the first time 
it's a, where we actually approach this thing from a semi-scientific point of view to see what the watch search, uh, uh, the watch after search project is doing from a scientific side with uh, Dr. Leonard Campagna and that sort of thing. It, it's also somewhat of a, a wildlife safari, a shark safari, because there's been a lot of human involvement in the actual film as well. Well, I think the cameramen that go down there and, and expose themselves to these sharks are as important. I mean, it's a, sharks are fine, but I think it's a, the human element is what makes, all, makes it all happen. Without the people, without the captain of the ship, uh, the skipper, without uh, somebody like the dive master uh, or uh, somebody to make coffee and tea, it's an expedition. It really is. We've got a, uh, we even have a doctor on board. Uh, the, the logistics is a nightmare. You've got to keep it all together. We sleep outside on a, on a little island. The tide is out um, or in. It's difficult to get, get there. We had 30 cases of equipment on the American side only. South African side had about uh, 15, 18 cases of equipment. These things are heavy. Generators are heavy. Um, <clears throat> the wind changed suddenly. Uh, uh, it, it, everything is absolutely unpredictable. Uh, for the past four days, we had no sharks. Everybody just sitting here waiting for something to happen. It's, um, it's interesting. So that, that's the challenge to you as the filmmaker, to get it all together and get the product the way you want it or to have it even better than you want it at the end. The challenge is to get the best film together that anybody has ever made. That is the challenge. To do so, you've got to get the best people together. And, uh, and you've got to have your head together to keep it all running smoothly. Uh, people have got to be fed. And uh, filmmakers run on their stomachs like soldiers. Uh, the camera's got to work. I mean, we've got salt air. Something happens in the camera, we've got to send it away. That's a day shooting gone. Uh, anything can happen at a certain moment. And you, you don't mess with Africa, you don't mess with the sea, you don't mess with sharks. It's their world you're working in. Uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge. It's, a, it's, it's quite a challenge. Do you believe that you could have done the same project with a solely South African crew? That's interesting. I don't know. It's a hypothetical question because I'm sitting in a situation where I have Americans involved. Uh, we have great divers in South Africa. We have got great filmmakers. Uh, yes, I think it would have taken us. And we would have approached the whole thing differently. Um, I think for a future co-production co reason, what we've done now, um, this, 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 this learning curve we had to go through, learning to work with Americans, their way of dealing, their way of working. That's interesting. We all grew up uh, working for SABC and Safritel on these people and we have a certain style of filmmaking. We're now talking, I mean, film like this will go out in June um, to 59 million households immediately. It's a total bo different ball game, it's a different kettle of fish. Um, your approach is different, the things you say are different, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a responsibility. Uh, just one more question. Uh, the American crew that came over, they seem to get hit with quite a surprise at the, the conditions of the seas around South Africa and how fast they can change. Uh, do, you, do you consider that a difference between how South Africans could have handled it and how the Americans can handle it? <coughs> this is a rough trip um, in the sense that we're roughing it. I mean, this is a fishing trawler we're sitting on. We're fitting into an existing situation. I mean, uh, white shark research is a... They don't cater for filmmakers. Uh, the, the weather in California or in Miami, where these guys come from, I mean, that's the Pacific Ocean, it's not like this. It is really, very, very different. This is the African coast, and the stretch where we are at the moment is probably the most, the, the roughest and the most in, unpredictable in the world. I think we would have, we would have had the same problem. Maybe that way to the weather because we like from outside. And I think it is up to them, yeah. And they, but they, I think they did very well. They did extremely well. We had a great team here. Okay, and now a word from our sponsor. Ron and Valerie. Okay, I'm ready. Tea. 
Contexte de au contexte de la nature de Oh, de Tuesday, it's all Tuesday, it's all Tuesday. Where's this torture? Right, you got everything. Yeah. You got a heavy enough weight belt. No weight belt at all. Mark, pass my weight belt there. Hey. The one you used. On the last day, the last day. You can see how all, here's all the tag ones we saw. Nah, to. that's my weight belt there. Here's the one that you have. You have blowing beaver tails sticking out here. Solid lad. What is don't, don't dribble from up there, see? <laughs> What's happening? You're having a problem? Yeah. Let's get it around. Down. Just go straight down. Go straight down. Shocks him. Just go straight down. Right down. I said straight down, not turn. Okay. Good work. One this side, one this side. Thanks. I'll do a lot of things, but I don't want to swim around with a bait oh, attached sure. to my tongue. Wait a minute. Pause <laughs> up there. I wouldn't do that for just anybody, son. Uh, thanks a lot, eh? <laughs> you gotta pay me. Just let me get in first and shoot them getting into the water. Okay. Okay. Want to hand that to me, Ray? Alright, meet you in the cage, alright? Okay. Now, you started with uh, chumming, and I understand now you're an honorary representative of the White Shark Research Project, so I think you already know the routine. You've seen us been doing it enough. So we pull the cage up, just slide on in like you've been seeing us do, and we'll uh, give it a go, alright? Okay. Gordon, mind 